Hello everyone, and welcome to my Magister's to Race dungeon and quest guide. Before you head into this dungeon, then there's one important thing to do. That is to pick up the quest for the dungeon itself, because by completing this, you will also unlock heroic mode. You pick up the dungeon quest at the building that I've marked with the red arrow. In this building, there will be a few different NPCs, and what you're looking for is the Draenei male character. He will offer you a quest that is called Magister's to Race. The quest will tell you to go into the dungeon and find a spy. So now it's time for you to assemble a 5-man group and head to the entrance. You can find it right here. Now you're ready to start the dungeon. And in order to hand in the first quest, you will have to deal with a bit of trash monsters and the first boss. The trash monsters can be a bit difficult, especially on heroic mode, so make sure to bring someone that can CC the targets. Once in a while, the mage guards will start to cast dampening fields. If you stand in this, you will reduce your healing taken by 75%. So if you need a heal or you take damage, then make sure to get out of these. The good thing about the field is that it also reduces your spell damage taken by 75%. So if someone is about to cast on you, you could always go into this to reduce your spell damage taken. On normal mode, a priest can also mind control the monsters and for example take advantage of the mage guard spells. Alright, so once you've taken care of a bit of the trash monsters outside, you can start moving into the room with the first boss. In here, you have to deal with all the trash monsters, because these are linked together with the boss. So if you pull the boss without killing these, well then you'll most likely end up dying. The first encounter, Sealing Fireheart, is super easy. All you have to do is to interrupt Drain Life and Drain Manor, and then you have to take care of the crystal that you once in a while will be able to attack. Also make sure that everyone enters the room before you start the encounter, else they will be stuck outside the room. As a priest you can still use your circle of healing and prayer of healing to heal the party members. Like I mentioned earlier, make sure to interrupt the drain life and drain mana ability. When he is low on mana, he will move towards one of the green crystals. Here he will start to channel an ability to regen mana. Now you will also be able to attack the fell crystal. Take it down fast to make sure that boss doesn't reach in too much mana. If you reach in too much mana, he will also start to cast an ability. This will do a high amount of AoE damage to all the party members. On normal mode, the boss kill will grant 120 reputation with the Shattered Sun. On heroic mode, 250 and an epic item. Now make your way to the second boss. In this room, you will find these worms. These you have to take care of. And as a DPS, chill a bit. They will hurt a lot and kill you pretty much instantly. The blood elf that is laying down in the background is the one we have to talk to, so the spy we have to find for the first quest. Hand it in and pick up the follow up quest, the squire squire. The second boss is a bit more difficult compared to the first one, and if you ignore the mechanic where you have to kill the adds, so the pure energy, then your group will most likely end up dying, at least on heroic mode. Your energies will deal a high amount of AoE damage to anyone within 20 yards, so make sure to spread out, but also be in range to kill them. Killing pure energy will also grant you the buff Energy Feedback. This will increase your damage done by 50% for 30 seconds. You can stack this up to 10 times, but every time you get one stack, you will also take 300 arcane damage every second. Another important thing you have to know about the pure energy is that you cannot kill them with AoE damage, so you need to single target them. Once you have taken care of the encounter, you will gain access to the next location. Here you will find an orb that you have to right click. By right clicking this, you will complete your quest, but also summon an NPC where you hand in the quest. Now you will also be on the final part of the quest chain, and by completing this quest, you will unlock heroic mode, but also be able to choose one of these epic gems. On your way to the third boss, a new type of trash monster will also start to appear. These you have to be careful about, especially as a healer and ranged DPS. Make sure to stay as far away as possible. If you get too close, it will start to do chain damage to all nearby targets. The remaining trash monsters that we'll meet inside the dungeon is pretty similar to what we encounter at the beginning of the dungeon. So make sure to use CC here, but also stay out of the dampening field so you don't get reduced healing. At this point, you're almost ready to start the third boss encounter. But before doing this, I recommend you to clear a lot of the trash monsters in here, because you might accidentally pull them if you don't. If you clear the whole room, you can even start the fight from the other side. But how does this fight work? 
I mean, there's five different targets. Who do we kill first, and what do we do? Priestess Delrissa is the target in the middle, and she's always represented in this dungeon and during this fight. The other four targets is randomly chosen between eight different NPCs. This fight works like a 5 vs 5 arena. You will be able to CC these targets, but they will also be able to CC you. The first time you CC them, they might even try to break out of it with a PvP trinket. Therefore, it might also be useful for you to equip a PvP trinket during this fight. You will not be able to tank these because they will randomly attack people in order to prevent them from doing anything. For example, in this case, I tried to heal and the rogue kicked me. Overall, this fight isn't that difficult, as long as you make sure that you use your interrupt and cooldown, but you also CC, for example, stun, fear, sheep, and etc. Also make sure to assist your group by dispelling them or providing them buffs and bubbles. All you need to do next is to take care of one pack of trash monsters, and then you're ready to encounter the final boss in the dungeon. Whenever we are clearing trash monsters or doing the third boss, then I also like to take advantage of using the walls and optics in the game. This allows me not to take any damage when I'm behind these and I can always move out to do a bit of healing and then back in. During the Kelfast Sunstrider fight, there's a lot of different mechanics to look out for. Make sure to always try and interrupt fireball. You can also spell reflect this as a warrior. A bit into the fight, a phoenix might spawn. This will start to chase one of your party members and do hellfire, and if you stand in the hellfire, you take 2000 damage every second. There's two important spells to always pay attention to. The first one being flame strike, a 5 second cast that will explode for a lot of damage. If you stand in this on heroic mode as a non-tank, you'll most likely get one shot. The next spell to pay attention to is power blast. When he casts power blast, he also uses shock barrier. This will absorb a lot of damage and make him immune to interrupt. The only way to interrupt him is to make sure you take down his shield, and then it's important that you interrupt him right away. If you don't do this, then the tank will be hit for around 40 to 50,000 damage, so even one-shotting the tank. Warriors will not be able to spell reflect the power blast, but as a paladin, I like to use my divine shield, so my bubble on the first power blast. In phase two, the phoenix will no longer be moving but instead start to cast fireballs on random targets. When the phoenix is dead, an egg will spawn, and if you don't manage to kill this, it will hatch and turn into a new phoenix, so make sure to prioritize the egg. Gravity laps will also begin in phase 2. Three random orbs will spawn and start to chase you and your party members, doing a high amount of damage to anyone being close to them. You cannot attack the orbs, so you need to prioritize either killing the phoenix or the boss right now. Once you have taken down Kel fast, make sure to loot the head from him. If you don't do this, you won't complete the quest and be able to do heroic mode. So loot the head and head up the ramp and click on this orb. This will teleport you back to where you picked up the first quest. Here you simply hand it in, pick an epic gem and now you can do heroic mode. In case you're interested in more phase 5 videos or maybe even preparation videos for Wrath of the Lich King, then make sure to check out my channel. As always, thank you for watching and have an amazing day. Peace.